let's talk about muscles and muscle cell physiology. Muscles are really interesting cells. What does muscular tissue do? Muscular tissue is responsible for allowing us to move, right? Without muscle tissue, uh, we would just have to lay in one place all the time, kind of like, I don't know, a tree or something like that. Um, but it also gives our body stability. And this is significant for those of you who will be working with patients someday, because when you're working with a patient who is, for example, unconscious due to a health problem or anesthetized, then you have to make sure that you are supporting their head and neck or they can really injure their neck um, because they're unconscious and don't have the body stability that's protecting their body. Anyone who's tried to pick up a little kid who's sound asleep knows uh, how different a completely unconscious person is. But muscular tissue does so much more than what we think of as muscles like the biceps do. Uh, muscle physiology allows muscles to um, move substances inside of the body. So every time your heart beats, that is muscle contraction that's pushing blood through all of your blood vessels. When your blood pressure goes up, it's because of smooth muscle making your blood vessels smaller, or that's one of the things that can do it. If there is saliva in your mouth, like there is in mine, it is because there are little tiny smooth muscles in your salivary glands that are pushing the saliva into your mouth. Um, when you are digesting your food, when your stomach and chest are moving things around, that is also muscular tissue. In addition, muscular tissue is responsible for most of the heat that's being produced by an individual's body. One of the reasons why husbands and wives often disagree about where the thermostat should be set is that an individual with more muscle mass actually is making a lot more heat. So at any given temperature, they can feel too warm um, when a person with less muscle mass sitting next to them feels quite comfortable. So all of those things. Here is what muscle tissue looks like through the microscope, and you should already know this. Um, there is striated muscle, which is voluntary, and this depicts skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is striated. What does that mean? Well, long ago, people discovered these stripes, right? And when you were learning about the different tissues, we learned that skeletal muscle was striated and voluntary. Voluntary means I can think and I can move that muscle. You, you can think about your heart and maybe influence it to beat faster, but you can't influence your heart to like um, beat at exactly the tempo of your favorite song. We will mostly be talking about skeletal muscle. But I should remind you that a smooth muscle is not striated, look, no stripes, and it is also not voluntary. You cannot make your stomach digest your meal faster, even if you think about it. Now, the main proteins that we're gonna talk about here in skeletal muscle, those main proteins do a very, very similar thing in smooth muscle. However, contraction of smooth muscle is significantly different. Uh, we just don't have time to investigate it in detail in our course. And then we've got cardiac muscle, and cardiac muscle is striated. And for you and I, that means that the basic cell biology of how a skeletal muscle cell does its contraction is going to be basically how a heart muscle cell does its contractions, basically. However, um, cardiac muscle is different because it's got these intercalated discs. Their significance we're not going to talk about here in the muscle segment of the class, but boy, will we be talking about it when we get to cardiovascular physiology. Um, cardiac muscle is also not voluntary. Nuclei. Skeletal muscle cells are really, really unusual cells. And they have many, many, many nucleuses, many nuclei. 
whereas smooth muscle cells and heart muscle cells have got a single um, nucleus for each cell. You know, let me actually draw a skeletal muscle cell. Let me do that. Let me do that. I need to insert a new slide that is blank. Great. Okay. Let's do that here. I want to draw them for you. Normally, I would do this on the whiteboard, and I would draw that there is like a Oh, I better draw it in yellow. I would draw that there is a heart muscle cell and a heart muscle cell might kind of look like that, okay? And it's gonna have a single central nucleus. By comparison, a skeletal muscle cell, hmm, a skeletal, what am I doing wrong? A skeletal muscle cell is gonna be crazy long. As a matter of fact, if I could go like three or four or five more of these screens, I would do it because skeletal muscle cells are insanely long. How long are they? Um, a, a skeletal muscle cell is generally almost the length of whatever muscle it is inside of. Okay, that's insane, right? Because you're used to being able to see cells and look at them under the microscope. Skeletal muscle cells, many of them, are way too long to be placed under the microscope. But you can see them through the mic. You can only see them through the microscope because they're microscopically thin. So here would be our um, okay, green. Here would be lots and lots and lots and lots of nuclei. And the reason that skeletal muscle cells have so many nuclei is when you were still inside of your mama, this was actually lots of individual cells that all got together and say, hey guys, let's all get together and make ourselves a giant skeletal muscle cell. And a skeletal muscle cell is generally referred to as a muscle fiber, a muscle fiber, okay? That always sounds like it's something gigantic, right? But when we say muscle fiber, we generally mean it's a muscle cell. We use the term muscle fiber more than we use the term muscle cell. Great. Ready? Oh, by the way, how long can skeletal muscle cells be? Well, if you're someone super tall like Yao Ming, your sartorius can easy, easily be, I'm guessing, two and a half, three feet long. And so there could be muscle cells that long. Crazy. Now, muscle cells have a very complicated internal structure. Um, when, whenever I teach um, cell biology, I, I try and warn students that that sort of stereotypical cell that we're looking at, that is, it is, it is round and it's got a nucleus and it's got, like almost no, no cells in the human body really look like that. And that's because that's some sort of like general jack of all trades kind of cells and human cells are all specialized. And so they've got specialized structure. I think nowhere is that more dramatically seen than in muscle cells and nerve cells. They are, they are really, really dramatic. Um, so let's look at that. First of all, let's start with the entire muscle and a muscle is an organ. So this is, I don't know, maybe the biceps femoris, some thigh muscle, okay? And that is your entire muscle. We remember that a muscle is attached to a bone by a tendon. Now, there is connective tissue all around the outside, but there's connection, connective tissue in the inside too. If you were to take a whole muscle and cut across it and look at it, you would see that there were many groups of cells like that. Purple, like that, okay? That is called a fascicle. A fascicle is a bundle of muscle cells. So you've got your whole muscle, the biceps or whatever, and it's divided up into fascicles. We're gonna talk about motor units in a moment. I want you to remember 
that a motor unit is not the same thing as a fascicle. A fascicle is an anatomical distinction. A motor unit is a functional distinction. So muscles are organs. They're divided up into bundles of cells called fascicles. Each individual um, cell in the fascicle is known as a muscle fiber. And they usually get called muscle fibers just because they're such unusual cells that it's just easier to call them a muscle fiber. Now, here, this is, this is kind of interesting here, so follow me on this. Do you see this gray outline there? That gray outline, that is the cell membrane of a single muscle cell, a single muscle fiber. And do you see how the nucleus, the nucleus, see it's right there pointing to the blue thing? That nucleus is like squeezed under, just barely under the cell membrane of that giant cell, the muscle fiber. Remember, it's giant in length, but not in diameter. Right? Now, all of this, that is all inside of a single muscle cell, a single muscle fiber all of that organization. And the organization is into these long, long tubes, these long tubes or cylinders inside of a single muscle cell are called myofibrils. The myofibrils are not cells. The myofibrils are inside the cell. So muscle and then fascicles and then muscle cells and then inside of them are these fascicles. I'm sorry, myofibrils. There you go, myofibrils. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, like 15 uh, myofibrils inside of the muscle fiber. And those myofibrils in turn are made out of proteins that have got really huge quaternary structure. Remember that some proteins get stuck together with others of their kind to make really big things like hair? That is something with quaternary structure, and those are the myofilaments. Ultimately, the proteins that are most important in these myofilaments are actin and myosin, and we will talk more about them. Now, earlier, like right, like right here, right, right here, I was cutting down the length of that long cell. If you cut down the length of it and look at it, it looks like this and you can see the stripes. However, in this other view, I have cut across it. Not only have I cut across it, but this is a fascicle. And here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight individual muscle cells. That means I've got eight muscle fibers, eight muscle fibers. Now, inside of the muscle fibers are the myofibrils. How many myofibrils do you think there are on this particular image? Like, I don't know, 200? Okay, so inside of a single muscle cell, there are many nuclei and there are zillions of these myofibrils. And the myofibrils run the length of the cells. Now, in this magnification, we cannot see myofilaments. So you are not looking at myofilaments. They're there, but they're too small for us to see with this magnification. This is just another image showing the same thing, that we have got um, a fascicle, the fascicle's got lots of individual muscle fibers. Here we've got one muscle fiber, and you can see it's myofibrils, and it is made out of those myofilaments, smaller and smaller. We will talk about this more at the beginning of the next video. Oh, that's not true. The next video I want you to watch is an animation that my husband and I are going to do in my garage. I know, it's sad. It's even sadder than it sounds. And after that, we will pick up here at the third video.